Hey everyone, and welcome back to the second session of the Maya Classroom. In the first session, we basically looked over how the user interface works inside of Maya. We looked over how to edit certain things inside of polygons. And today we're going to go a little bit further than that. We're going to, of course, practice a little bit of the tools of how to edit certain 3D objects in the 3D space. And also we're going to recreate a small little image that I have here pulled up. So this is from an artist. Uh, I don't actually have the reference of who this person is, but still. Uh, I'm going to be recreating this room into a bit of a higher polygon kind of aspect because if you notice everything is jagged, everything is low polygon, I'm going to recreate this into a higher polygon kind of scenario and as we do so, we're going to start learning a bit more about how to model certain things and certain objects. So let's get going here. So I have my head loaded up. I'm going to create the room first. So I'm just going to select the box. Don't forget your, uh, your key binds on your keyboard, so Alt left click allows me to rotate, Alt middle click on the scroll wheel allows me to pan, scroll in and out with uh, to zoom in and out. Let me just drag this up. Right click, face, select this, plus shift click, shift click to select multiple objects. The roof is a little bit too high, so I'm going to lower it down by going to vertex mode, object mode right here face everything shift right click extrude and i'm just going to increase the thickness just a little bit to create those walls that we're looking for fantastic now we have the room so this is going to be our reference kind of angle where the room is going to go next i would like to create the cauldron first or actually let's check out the picture maybe the stones around the cauldron and the cauldron itself so this piece first so I'm going to create a cylinder just to create the stones. Scale this down. There we go, kind of squarish. Let's just get them to that size. Perfect. Now I would like to isolate this actual object so I don't have to see the room and this together. So the way to do that is control one. So you select the object that you're looking for, control one again to reappear. So if I select this object, control one will disappear the small little stones and control one will get it back. So control one on this, I'm gonna add an edge, shift right click, insert edge loop tool. I'm gonna create one. It's not gonna let me do this this way. All right, fine. We're gonna inset then. Just gonna click and select everything here. Perfect. Shift right click extrude, and I'm just gonna offset a little bit with the extrude function, like so. Face delete, so I can have that right here. Perfect. Now edges, select double click, shift double click, shift right click, and we're gonna bridge these so we can have this kind of a pit. Edges, I'm going to select all of them. Or actually, I'm just going to select the rings, shift, sorry, control right click, and we want to loop these. So edge loop, edge loop. There we go. So we can get just these little functions. Bevel the edges, small faction, and one extra segment in the center. Perfect. I'm going to go to the edges, double click on these, shift double click and grab all of these on the sides. There we go, let's just grab all of them. There we go, I'm just going to scale them down just a tiny bit just to create some deformities. And like so. Perfect. Of course you can create each one on its own, but that's something I did not want to do right now. Edge, I'm going to create a few edge loops. So right here, bottom, top, over here. This one's a little bit too close, so there we go. And of course on the bottom piece, and there you have it. Awesome. 
Now when it comes to deformations later on we're going to go through them, but for now let's just keep it this way. So what I would like to add now is a few little bricks of wood. And let's just grab a cylinder, move it to place, scale it up. Rotate it. So preferably if you want to rotate properly, it's better if you just go to the tool menu, attribute editor, P cylinder, the first one, and just rotate. There we go. Minus 90. Control D to duplicate, and I'm just going to rotate this one like so. So what we can do here actually is press D on your keyboard to allow you to move the pivot point and the gizmo. That way I can just place it right here. What I'm going to do is rotate Control D a little bit here, then Shift D will create multiple copies. Select everything. Oh, we're gonna have to reset this. All right, then it's better if I just completely redo this properly. Delete this one. I'm just going to create a new cylinder. P cylinder right here on the attribute editor and minus 90. There we go. D on the keyboard just to be able to align this on the edge right here. Would like it to be the same kind of height. There we go. Maybe a bit higher. Rotate this. Shift right click combine. And align it properly. Maybe scale it down a little bit. Use a little bit of scale right here and plop it down right here. All right, awesome. Next, the cauldron. You can use a sphere to start. It's going to be a pretty big cauldron, so I'm just going to get it to the size we're looking for. Faces, I'm going to select half. Well, a bit higher than half, maybe just take, <coughs> excuse me, just take a little bit higher than half. Shift right click, extrude the faces, thickness just a little bit. Object mode, great. Now it's a little bit thicker in the bottom, and it's a bit thinner in the top, so let's try to do that one. Let me put this all the way to the here, press D on your keyboard and scale it down. Like so, grab the edges and let's scale this down a little bit here.
shift on my keyboard while I move so I can copy the edge and start modifying that lip that we're looking for. Shift click up on the arrow. So I'd like to create a hard edge here. That's very important. So what I want to do is just scale just a little bit with shift clicked on. Shift click up a little bit just so I can get that two little subdivisions right here. That way when I press and smooth, it's actually going to stick to it. So here again, a small little lip, like so. Scale, shift click and scale in a little bit, then scale a bit more. And one more small one. Shift click, let's press down and again down. And again a small one. And I'm just going to close it up and move it down. And scale it down. Merge, collapse, merge the center. So if I press 3, I get this very nice lip happening on the top piece. And it looks like a polygon got away from us. Weird, okay. Anything else? No surprises? Who else? <laughs> okay, let's just go. So here again. One more and last one. Merge, merge. There we go. Great. Now that's the bottom. So the bottom is a little bit different. So control one, just so I can see the bottom perfectly well. Let's grab the faces. So here I would like to actually use the soft selection. So press B on your keyboard and to access this tool, you will have to go here on the top where attribute editor is, check the tool settings. Inside of the tool settings right here, you have soft selection. So the fall off radius will allow me to reduce that influence. So the brighter the color, there we go, the brighter the color, means the more influence it will take in these regions. So if I go really high, everything is going to be now influenced by this modification. What we want is just a little bit. And I'm just going to move this vertex up so I can create this. Perfect. Object mode, control 1 to get out of this. And let's bring this down right here. So here we have the legs are inside of the fire, so that's no problem. Press 1. All right, so here we have to create the legs. So I'm going to make sure that I remove my actual soft selection, control one. Oops, sorry. Object mode, control one. And let's see which one we can grab here. So I'm going to grab this one along with this one. These, maybe a few more. No, this is fine. All right, great. Let's do an extrude. So shift right click extrude, extrude them down. like so. And when we smooth, it's pretty nice, but I would like a little bit more details on the edges. So what I'm going to do here is create in the middle of them. Press Q to deselect the actual insert ledge and just put these in. Three, a little bit better. Control one and they're inside. All right, fantastic. So this is the first step done. We learned a bit of modeling tools on them and it looks pretty decent right now. So let's look at the rest. So this is fine. All these little details and cracks, we're not gonna do them now. It's actually preferred if you do these in another software like ZBrush. But right now we're gonna look at maybe the table or the chair. So let's do the table for now. And then we can continue on for the next lesson on how to do the candles and everything else. And this lesson will continue on and will drag on into creating the textures, the lights, and the rendering and everything for Maya. So we have our table. So if you look at it, it is a pretty big piece with a few breaks and very square feet. Okay. Let me 
drag this here. Let's get it up. So the way I see it, so for an example, look at the room the way it's proportioned. So you have, let's say this is half of this wall and it's going a little bit further than half. So we would like that to happen as well here. Something like so. Same goes for here, so it's like not even one third, so that's perfect right here. And let's scale up. So technically it's supposed to be the same almost height as this, so somewhere here. A bit too high, let's just drag it down a bit, perfect. I'm going to create a few subdivision levels from the polycube 2 here, from the attribute editor. So let's add maybe 6, 6, no, uh, we're going to add 3 on the height and 6 again on the depth. There we go. So it looks pretty junky and broken and stuff like that. So let's see if we can use some deformations. So modeling. Deform and let's do a... Where was this? If I remember correctly, it was mesh tools, mesh display. I need to remember where it was. I'm really sorry, it seems that my recorder stopped working. So what we're going to do here is just finish up with this actual shape. So what we can do is create the legs. So here we went back to polycube, we did a 3, we did a 6 here, there we go. Okay, so what we can do in general is actually just select, for an example here, bevel this edge. Small little faction, not too big. There we go, select these vertices, make them merge, and we can start adding these little details that you saw going in. Sorry, extrude, scale them in, creating that little break that we saw before. And you can do a lot of things like this inside of Maya. So what we can add as well is some edges right here and right here, just to keep the box, the table, sorry, correct. And there we go. You get these little breaks and cracks and stuff like that the way I did it. Let's add a few more. Press the scale after the extrude just to be able to scale this down and move it like so. Maybe even grab this vertex and move it back up and this one. And merge them together. Great, you can do this for the entire table. Uh, the legs. Let's get some new cubes here. So the way I like to model specific things like this is I usually remove the face on the top. Sorry, object mode. Remove the face on the top and grab my edges. And since they look a bit wonky and junky, I can actually just start modeling by pressing shift click. Move them a bit to the side. and drag them up. Control one, just so I can see the bottom and increase the size of the bottom feet. There we go. Control one. Control D, duplicate this. 
shift click, control D, and duplicate these two like so. And if I press 3 on them, they look terrible, so let's just re-delete everything and add those edges we're looking for. So what we're going to do here is enter the Upshoop tool, one here, one here, here, It. I'm going to add a few more here just to keep that from smoothing too much and one on the bottom. There we go. Control D. Shift click, Control D and move them back. There we go. So I want these a bit forwards. Perfect. So this concludes the second phase and we're going to keep going this way creating new models, that way you learn exactly what I'm doing and as I'm doing them. Makes it a lot easier for people that are just starting with Maya to learn the techniques, the proper workflow and everything else to get together. And in the next session, we're gonna do maybe the chair, we're gonna do the chest, until to the end, to the point where we're gonna get to texture this entire scene and light and render it using Arnold inside of Maya. So thank you so much for following me. Uh, if you can, subscribe and like and comment if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.